One of those situations is the, the outer San Francisco Bay Area near the famous Golden Gate Bridge. And, um, and that was impacted uh, tremendously starting from the 1930s. Uh, for one, the Golden Gate Bridge was built and there was lots of blasting going on and, uh, and, and, and reclamation. Then uh, uh, during the war, uh, the Second World War, uh, there was large scale military buildup in that area. As a matter of fact, the entrance to, uh, uh, to uh, San Francisco Bay was closed off by a giant uh, 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 chain link fence by a metal uh, construction uh, so that uh, uh, enemy submarines could not go in and destroy the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Navy inside San Francisco Bay. It was a big deal. Lots of dredging, lots of underwater explosions, lots of shoreside reclamation after the war relative to uh, human activities, mm -hmm. to building uh, wharves and, uh, and, and harbors and such. And the bottlenose dolphins uh, that I just mentioned and harbor porpoises, a smaller uh, uh, porpoise that is related to the finless porpoise that we have here in, uh, in, in, in South uh, Hong Kong waters, uh, totally disappeared from, from that area, from the bay. Um, and then uh, these activities, varying types of intensive human activities occurred from the 1930s uh, to the mid-1980s, I'd say, um, when uh, environmental regulations were much better enforced and the area became cleaner. And uh, right after that area became cleaner, uh, we had bottlenose dolphins returning uh, to uh, the uh, San Francisco Bay. And in 2008, finally, it took a longer period of time, but in 2008, we had the harbor porpoises come back as well. I, I take this very personally because I used to work in that general area in the 1980s and, um, and, uh, and, and quite a bit in the early 1990s as well, and it was totally devoid of these animals. And now I'm working there again. I'm actually doing observational and uh, photo ID work mm -hmm. uh, from the uh, from the, the bridge, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we can do that with these animals. The other example that I have is also of bottlenose dolphins, and it's uh, right where I uh, work uh, and live in Galveston, Texas, um, and uh, and that area, the, uh, the 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 ship channel of Galveston that goes up to. Uh, 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 the, it's called the Houston Ship Channel, it's a large ship channel, and then there's a smaller one called the Galveston Ship Channel, but both of those are amazingly environmentally changed, or we would say environmentally degraded. There is very little uh, 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 overall natural habitat left in that area, and that's because of large-scale oil and gas uh, uh, activities related to refining. Uh, and, uh, and of course, a lot of large-scale shipping. Uh, Houston is the, uh, is the second largest port in, in, in the USA. Uh, uh, lots of pollution as a result. Uh, overall, in the past, a long time ago, a massive artificial island was built. Uh, I don't have the exact number of hectares for you at this point, but it's several kilometers uh, uh, long and about a kilometer and a half wide and I'll, 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 I'll get those figures later on. But the, uh, uh, that area was, uh, uh, was reclaimed. That, that, that used to be just a tiny sandbar, uh, also by, uh, by, uh, uh, by uh, uh, filling, uh, filling that area in uh, by blasting and whatever needs to be done in order to do that. That was a long time ago. It was uh, uh, finished in 1915, uh, so approximately 100 years ago. And uh, the dolphins came right back uh, after that. We know that from the historical records of the Galveston Historic Society. Uh, and uh, lately, in the last uh, 15 years or so, uh, again because of environmental regulations uh, of, of, of the USA, um, that area, while still an amazingly human degraded area, has been cleaned up a bit. The pollution is less, underwater noise is less, and there's no more of that kind of explosion, destruction type of stuff. And dolphins have been coming back to other areas, uh, to the north, uh, towards the Houston uh, ship channel, uh, uh, more now every year. And that's really nice to see, that's encouraging to see. I emphasize that these are examples that I'm familiar with, that I find as positive relative to the uh, possibility of animals uh, 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 reusing a habitat 
if we clean it up properly, uh, or if we make a good attempt at it, and uh, even though I don't think the Galveston Ship Channel has been cleaned up properly, but it is getting better, um, if we do that, then the animals have a chance. But I perfectly admit that these, this is a different species. They do similar things to Chinese white dolphins. Uh, it would be nice to look at uh, other situations, other areas as well. It is my uh, uh, belief that uh, the animals are capable of coming back if we clean up the rest of the area. And there, I find very positive the, uh, the uh, proposal to link the existing, very successful, Sha Chao Lung Ku Chao Marine Park, and the proposed, uh, and I'm told that, uh, that despite some delays right now, that it is definitely going ahead, uh, development of the Brothers Island Marine Park, uh, that has been a hot bed of activity for these Chinese white dolphins. To link those two, and to, uh, along with the uh, airport exclusion zones, where there is no traffic allowed whatsoever, uh, to really provide a safe and a good habitat all the way uh, from the mainland Chinese border uh, to uh, the east of uh, the Brothers Island. So I see that as a, as a really positive development uh, that will go into the future. And if that is properly controlled, uh, yes, I think the Chinese white dolphins can come back.